Hi everyone, my name is Paris Goodyear Brown and I am the creator of the Trauma Play Model, the Executive Director of the Trauma Play Institute and the Clinical Director of Nurture House, which is a sweet little child and family treatment center in Franklin, Tennessee. And I am coming today to show you just one intervention of the 131 interventions in the Big Behaviors and Small Containers volume that is gonna be launching release date May 10th. Um, and it is, I'm so excited about it. It is a very practical volume of dozens and dozens of interventions that uh, line up with the trauma play components, one of which is soothing the physiology. And I work with children and uh, their parents um, who have experienced the kinds of trauma that have wired their neurophysiology for continually scanning the environment for signs of danger. And so we're offering ways for that child to risk relaxing in deeper and deeper levels of relaxation in the presence of their caregiver, potentially, assuming that's a non-offending caregiver, and in the presence of the therapist. And so we offer some playful ways to help that. Um, the Still the Struggle Socks is one of the interventions in the book, and it takes just a few very simple materials, and I wanted to share it with you today because it's something that can be done even through the screen if you're doing telehealth with clients. So I ask the family to find a sock, sock that's very, you know, um, meaningful for them, a nice fuzzy sock or um, one that's got a funny saying on it or something for the child or teen. And then I ask them to find dried, I have here dried rice. Um, or dried beans, uh, you could do lavender seeds, or even maybe even dried pasta orzo grain, something like that. Um, and they begin to fill the sock with the grains of rice or the dried beans. And it offers something that eventually will be able to add just a little weight to the eyes in the relaxation work. And that's because again, children who've experienced trauma especially if it's been complex ongoing trauma, their brains and bodies have been wired to constantly scan the environment for signs of danger. So asking them to inviting um, relaxation is tricky for them. And so I never insist that a child closes their eyes, but I do have a basket of invitations. If you've ever seen a child show up um, for a, a mindfulness practice session and what the child does is you see their eyelashes flickering while they're trying desperately to relax, but their body is almost betraying them with the um, pre-wiring of hypervigilance, of watching and scanning for signs of danger. And so this invitation to make the still the struggle, so it's not so much of a struggle um, to be able to still their bodies and allow a deeper experience of relaxation. We put the rice or dried beans in the sock, we add then, I keep a whole slew of essential oils around this tea tree one smells for me kind of upregulating. So maybe not the one I'd want to use for my uh, still the struggle sock, <clears throat> but this one is lavender. And so assuming the child chose that as a calming, relaxing smell, then I might add drops of that to the dried rice or dried beans inside the sock. And then especially if the caregiver is with me in the room, we may together help the child or teen be able to sew up this edge of it. And then we have an offering to sort of take away the responsibility for the child to have to maintain their own physical response, letting them off the hook from that while they enter into deeper risks of relaxation with a safe holder in the environment. So that's um, still the struggle socks. One example of one of 131 interventions that you will find in big behaviors and small containers. So um, just wanted to share with you today, get your advanced copy and the release date is May 10th. Thanks guys.